We converted the decimal 45 into a binary string with no problem, but what happens if we're given a dotted decimal IP address, the kind that we've been working with throughout the course? What do you do then? Well, frankly, you just do what we did, except you do it four times. And here I just wrote 217, 103 before we started this particular video. I've got 200 there ready to convert, so let's convert this one to a binary string together. And again, going from left to right, you know, can I subtract 128? from 200. Sure I can. And what is my remainder? My remainder is 72. And by the way, I'm trying to keep it simple here and not do the additions as we go along here on the screen. But I want to remind you, you will have a dry erase board and a marker when you're taking the actual exam. And it is a good idea just to go ahead and quickly write it. Okay, you know, 200 minus 128 leaves me 72, etc. So can I then, with that remainder of 72, can I subtract 64 from that? Sure I can. And what does that leave me? That leaves me 8. Well, you can pretty much tell here, you could just go ahead and zip across the board if you wanted to because you can't subtract 32 from 8. You can not subtract 16 from 8. You can subtract 8 from 8, and that leaves us with 0. And I know this is so obvious I shouldn't have to tell you, but I'm going to do it anyway. When you reach zero as you're going across from left to right, just go ahead and fill the rest of the numbers in with zero, and you're good. And 200, that's the kind of number, really, you'll be converting that in your head before long. Once you get some practice in, it's amazing. You'll look at 200 and say, okay, I know that's 192, the first two numbers, and then I just need the 8. So what about the 17? What's that going to look like when we're done? Well. We know the first couple here are going to be zeros because you can't subtract any of those from 17. You can subtract 16 from 17. That leaves us 1. So obviously our 8, our 4, and our 2s are going to be all zeros and then 1 at the very end. So how about 100? We can't subtract 128 from 100, but we can subtract 64 from it, which leaves us 36 then you're just going to subtract 32 from 36. That leaves us 4, which leaves us another obvious answer. See how easy this is? Nothing to it. And this is, you're going to be doing this over and over again, this is the fundamental skill at the bottom of all subnetting and solving all subnetting problems. It all comes down to this. 3, no problem there. We're going to put all zeros across the board until we get 2. 2 and 1, so you already did this probably faster than I did it here on the board. And then that's all there is to it. So you've got your 1 back here, your 1 back here. And how do we test these again? How do we absolutely triple check our work? We simply go with each number, 200, 17, 103 individually, add up the bits that we set to 1, and as long as they add up to the value in question, we're in good shape. So with 200, 128 plus 64, that's 192. You add 8, and then you have 200. 17, easy enough. We have the bits 16 and 1 set to 1. The value is set to 1. So that's 17. 100, we have 64 and 32 set. That's 96. Add 4 on top of it. That's 100. And 3, easy enough. 2 plus 1 is 3. And that is it. So that's your binary string for this particular IP address. And while I certainly admit that you won't be doing too many individual conversions like this in real-world networking, you'll be doing these all the time when you're checking some subnetting. And we're definitely going to be using that when it comes to, wow, determining what subnet an IP address is on, uh, the broadcast address, and actual subnetting as well. Before we move on, and do not stop the video, before we move on to the next section and we do a little, little bit of excuse me, binary to decimal, just a quick reminder, this is the kind of thing that you can practice five minutes here and five minutes there. Because sometimes people get, and I, I have fallen prey to this myself, you get into the mentality of, okay, I'm going to study for seven hours. And, you know, and that's great if you can do it and you're knocking out everything that could take your focus off of what you're doing. But with this kind of thing, five minutes here, ten minutes there, whether you're at work, whether you're just hanging around the house, whatever you're doing, Grab a piece of paper and a pencil. You don't even need to buy a practice exam. Just write a number out. Write four numbers out. Write an IP address out without even thinking about it and say, okay, how would I convert this address 
to a binary stream, what would I end up with? You do a little bit here and a little bit there, and then on exam day again, you're just making it official because you are at CCNA level. So with these conversions done, we're going to take a look at some decimal, excuse me, binary to decimal conversions, and then we're going to go a little deeper into subnetting with determining how many subnets we have and how many valid hosts we have, and onward from there. So I'll see you there.